Welcome to the reading of Noah True Love Never Dies. The last time we read onto record Noah True Love Never Dies, Chapter 1, this is Chapter 2. Remember to access the link below to buy Noah on Amazon.com. And now we shall proceed. Chapter 2, A Disappearing Act. The next day at school, I looked beautiful in my new plaid mess of a dress. At Manchester Elementary School, Kenneth was late for school that day. It was a few days before the season ended, and I kept looking for him. Later, I was sure he'd be at school. I truly missed him. I could not wait for him to smile at me in my new dress my grandmother bought me. He was really going to be grinning when he saw I looked better than all the other girls in class in my new plaid dress. Turns out that Kenneth did not show up for school that day. I wore the plaid dress to school for four more days in a row. Kenneth did not ever show up again. At home, mother tried feverishly to get me to change the dress. It goes without saying that I refused to wear anything until Kenneth came back to school to smile at me in that new plaid dress. Turned out, Kenneth was not coming back to Manchester Elementary School. The following week, the teacher made a sad announcement. Boys and girls, quiet, she said, hitting that wood yardstick on the podium. I would like to let you know that little Kenneth Black moved with his family to another school district. Boys and girls, since we're now ending your time here at Manchester Elementary School, it's safe to say that Kenneth, one of our most treasured favorite students, will not be coming back. After that announcement, my little heart began to putter beyond control, not able to understand the feelings I was going through. I raced to the girls' bathroom where I cried loudly. <laughs> oh, those private feelings of years ago can be interpreted quite adequately as being puppy love. Whatever terminology can be used in my heart, I will always call those special feelings for Kenneth Black love. Yes, so moving on in this chapter, we're going to talk about the innocence of the first kiss, okay? These love stories are heating up and we're not even in high school yet. <laughs> if you thought things caught fire in the sixth grade, wait until I tell you about my first kiss. That was before Ronnie Morrow became the next boy to seal my heart in the seventh grade. I was in Mrs. White's drama, where we always had so much fun pretending to be grown-ups in her stupid plays. Mm -hmm. I believe the class was living out the teacher's own failed pursuit of love. She was a single woman who looked like comedian Ellen DeGeneres and never had a man to speak of. At 32, she told the class that she'd never even been married. So after one sees how she watches children, it is no wonder no man wants her. Turns out that her class is where I would experience my first kiss okay now you know we're talking about love and though a true love never dies right so since we're talking about love I will begin by saying the hookups between classmates for drama class were clearly established because it appeared everyone had a girl a boyfriend except for me keep in mind too that this entire event of the first kiss took place at 3 45 in the afternoon in the front and back seats of a vomit green color for country squire passenger seat station wagon with brown side panels. The teacher should have been fired for leaving us in the backseat of that mess of a ride where the first lessons of intimacy with boys was about to ignite. Yes, it was where young hormones began to jump all over the place where claims of connections could be made. As young life would have it on this one memorable evening, in the junior high school parking lot, the strangest thing happened to me. Yes. Suffice it to say, for what we did as kids back then, nowadays the drama teacher would have been in jail for child neglect. Boy, the things that happened in her old station wagon is what being a teenager is all about. Other than being fascinated by kisses that took place at the movies, 
I had not given much thought to it, meaning being kissed. I fantasize about kissing Kenneth Black. But even as a kid, I knew these thoughts were wrong. But I was told that my Kenneth crush was only puppy love anyway, so now I was growing up. <laughs> it's safe to say that my family moved away from the Los Angeles School District. When I was 11, only a few days after I graduated from Manchester, we moved to Maine, California, known for its annual state fair. Maine is a city in Los Angeles County, California, the United States. It is in Maine Valley between the Inland Empire and the San Gabriel Valley. Located 35 miles east of Los Angeles, this was white boy country, yes. We were the first black family to live on Belinda Street, where mother warned us, be good and do not act ghetto. No, that's when the realtor, Nancy Perkins, solidified what I wanted to be in life. Her ability to sell a home to a woman with a lot of children was quite impressive. She was neat and professional. I couldn't wait to grow up and be like her. During our first week in Maine, a welcome committee greeted us at the front door with oranges, peaches, and pumpkin pie. No fooling around was allowed in this good old town, right? Wrong, okay? <laughs> in our drama class, Mrs. White drove us around town to various gymnasiums and schools for rehearsal. As we did play some very adult roles as children in her hot drama class, there was a play called The Family That Nobody Wanted. The Family That Nobody Wanted is a 1954 memoir by Helen Doss Grisby. It retells the story of how Doss and her husband Carl, a Methodist minister, adopted 12 children of various ethnic backgrounds, white Americans, Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Korean, Mexican, and Native American. In White's class, I play Carl's wife, okay? I learned to memorize my lines, but the guy that played my husband, 12-year-old Bart Stewart, sported a girlfriend named Joyce that he loved playing grown people's life on, right? Bart didn't appreciate the close scenes with me when I played his wife. Yes, to him being the husband. On the last day before our presentation, Mrs. White powed our hot mixed family <laughs> into her station wagon where we were on our way to the um, school district auditorium. Bart was hugged up in the back seat with his ugly girlfriend, Brenda, mm -hmm, with her yellow buck teeth and bad breath. Mm -hmm. Little Bart was no gentleman like Kenneth Black was at Manchester. To prove to Joyce he only had eyes for her, he treated me badly by talking loudly to let others know he hated me. I ain't playing with you, girl. Stop trying to sit next to me, Tiffany, he said to me in an angry voice. I asked Joyce to be my girlfriend, he said, sounding like the idiot he was. He was so ugly and nasty, nobody wanted that boy. So who cared that he hooked up with the ugliest girl in school anyway? His breath stank like hers did. His socks were always dirty. I even learned from my brother Cal that he was poor enough to eat only potatoes and butter every day for dinner with his little nappy head, while his crazy mother kept the garbage in the family freezer to avoid getting cockroaches, okay? While we were on our way to the performance, Mrs. White said a pimply, Face boy named Ryan Bennett next to me in the back seat of the car. Hmm. I immediately began pushing him away from me. Stop sitting so close to me, boy, I cried. I went on to say, stop touching me, boy. When Mrs. White got out of the car to gather her materials for the trip, Bart started kissing Joyce like he was a grown man or something. He kissed her many times, leaving me glad I was only to kiss him in pretense as his wife <laughs> in the play. Next, the Chinese guy, Lu Chu, and his castmate, Cindy Smart, who played two of my kids in the play, they started kissing while Lu shoved this tiny hand up the girl's short dress. Oh, no. The last couple left. Mm-hmm. You're right. I looked at Ryan to let him know. Uh, there will be no kissing between us. So he keeps moving over toward Bart. And I told him to do earlier. I said, we're too young for this. Too young to know what my type was then. I never even really talked to white boys. Ryan's hair was strawberry blonde. It was shoulder length. While being too greasy for me, Ryan wore dark Coke bottle glasses on top of squinty blue eyes. This was not cool. 
Ryan, known as the smallest boy, yes, as in small, S-M-A-L-L, in the class, portrayed my son in the play. He was shorter than Bart Stewart. While all the other kids were kissing, I never contemplated kissing anyone, especially Ryan. In fact, I was wondering what was taking so long for Mrs. White to get back from her classroom with her junk. What kind of drama teacher leaves all those kids smoking up the windows in a car? While the windows turned white with kid breath, Ryan looked at me with puppy dog eyes because like the others, he wanted to kiss too. By this time, I was the only girl left in the car who was not partnered up with a kisser. He wanted to kiss me. Suddenly, I too felt the funk because all this kissing was making me dizzy on this hot night where the windows in the station wagon were turning white with steam. Since the worst, most derelict drama teacher in history was nowhere to be seen, out of nowhere, I felt a hot rush race through my body. Soon I was about to hook up with the boy who played my son in the family that nobody wanted. Growing up fast, 12-year-old Ryan moved over closer to me. Quietly, the smile on my face proved that I was beginning to kind of like this little boy a little bit. I had never kissed before. I was waiting for the right guy. I wanted to be kissed by a cute boy. Ryan did look better than old Bart did in his red plaid shirt with the brown boots he had going on. Suddenly, on the other kids continued to kiss. Ryan decided he wanted to be a man like Bart was, not a kid in this event. The 12-year-old took control. First, he placed his left arm around my shoulder because my left elbow was white coming out of that ashtray. That burning feeling that came out of left field began to rise into a small fire that made me squirm. Why was this happening? How was this happening? Next, Ryan turned his right shoulder slowly toward me as I hoped we were not going to get caught trying to be adults in the back seat of the drama teacher's bucket. Next, Ryan grabbed the first side, the left side, beg your pardon, of my face, and then Ryan looked into my face and said, be still. He sounded like a little man. I guess Ryan wanted to do the kissing thing right by taking copious tips from Bart, who was all up in Joyce's big mouth. Next, Ryan acted like he did this kissing thing before. He had words for me. Everybody else is kissing, so why can't we, Tiffany, he asked me. Instantly, I freed my left arm out of the ashtray. Then I wrapped it around the boy's waist. I wanted him to hurry up and not put his hand up my dress like the boy in the front seat's doing to his girl. I was feeling him now. Ryan kissed me, and immediately my lips were hot on fire. One kiss was enough. The next kiss found his tongue in my mouth. It was swirling like crazy. I liked it. In fact, it would take a few years for me to learn it was a French kiss. It was my first kiss. It was sweet and wet. When the kiss was over, I heard the driver's door open. Mrs. White was back. That's when the class straightened up quickly and stopped kissing. Sorry it took so long, guys. I actually lost my keys. Mrs. White apologized as she got into the car. When I go back in life to view my first kiss and kissing Ryan that day is one of the fondest memories I have. I love the way he erased it. He erased the anxiety by easing into the pleasurable moments of the first kiss by asking me if I wanted to do it first. It appears that Ryan merely wanted to be one of the crowd, as I did. The funniest thing about having the first kiss with a white boy named Ryan is how momentary the entire event was. After the kiss, Ryan forgot all about it, not realizing that in my whole life, that one kiss would prove to be one of the best kisses I have ever experienced in my life. Neither Ryan nor I ever spoke again to one another for the rest of the year or for life. That first kiss was merely a spur of the moment kiss that is sealed in my memory for the rest of my life. I don't recall a thing that happened after it. I doubted the boy who gave me this precious memory even remembers it happening. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The book is Noah, True Love Never Dies. It's available on Amazon.com. Thank you.